Yeah. Okay, so uh, I will start with the introductory part of the EC session, and the topic is learning with the simulated patients. So, inshallah, tomorrow you will be having your uh, practical session of EC, and uh, you will be studying in detail about this part that is learning with the simulated patients. So the question arises that uh, what do you mean by simulated patients? Because uh, uh, whenever we, because this is your ECE and ECE means early clinical exposure. So what do we want? We don't want to expose you like in the year two, we don't want to expose the students to the actual patients. So what we will do, we will try to expose you to the simulated patients. So uh, this is the exercise for today. And uh, the topic is how do we learn with the simulated patients? So anyone uh, has any idea what do we mean by this term simulated patients? Any idea by simulation or simulated Actors? patients? Someone acting as a patient. a patient. Okay. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so so actually these simulated patients are uh, standardized patients, and uh, or they can also be called as a sample patient. And these individuals, they are trained. They are trained and they act as a real patient. And they, uh, in a way, they simulate, or you can say they copy the symptoms and signs of the actual patients. So basically, they are just, you can consider them as actors, like the actors are doing acting or they are copying. So similarly, these simulated patients, they are copying the various symptoms and signs of the real patients. So this is what is basically meant by simulation. So uh, why it is important? Because throughout your MBBS career, uh, you will deal with the patients. So the patient is the center of the medical universe around which all our works they revolve and towards which all our efforts trend. So basically, whatever we are studying in the medical science, ultimately the purpose of our knowledge in the medical science is to serve our patients and the community. So basically, we are concerned with the patients. So in the ECE, we should have some basic idea about the common symptoms, about the common problems of the patients. So we first want to expose you to the simulated patients. And later on in your like maybe in the year four or year five, you will be dealing with the real patients in the hospitals or in the clinics. So right now, because this is an early exposure, you, are, you have been exposed for the first time to the clinical setting. So we will expose you to the simulated patients. So uh, during the ECE program till now, I think you must be familiar with the Calgary Cambridge framework. So this Calgary Cambridge framework is the technique or the process which the clinicians and the physicians they follow once they are doing the consultation with their patients. So just to revise with you, because I think this has already been covered in the previous sessions. So always try to remember these five steps of the Calgary Cambridge framework. Like first is the initiation of the session. How do we initiate our session with the patients? Second is the gathering of information. How do we gather the information? Then third is the physical examination. Fourth, explanation and planning. And the last, or how do we do the closing of the session, the closing part of the session? So what is the importance of this Calgary Cambridge framework? It provides two things. First, it provides a structure to our consultation and it helps in building in building the proper repo or in building the proper uh, relationships with our patients. So what we are doing in the initiation initiation part of the session. Like first, if a patient comes to you, what you will do, you will do a greeting of the patient. You will, you will greet the patient. You will introduce yourself. You will ask the patient's name, his date of birth, age. And you will demonstrate that you are aware of the confidentiality. You will not leak the confidentiality. Then uh, uh, you will take the consent for the interview. And you will ask him that why he has come to you for consultation. So all these things are covered in the initiation part of the session. Second step is the gathering of information. How do we gather the information? By asking questions, because you will ask the questions to your patients. Then only you will get the information. And there are two types of questions. First is the open questions and second is the closed type of questions. Closed questions means in which the response of the patient will be like yes or no. He will either say yes or say no. And in the open questions, 
he will explain to you the entire story he will tell you everything about himself or his problem so these are the open questions so you will gather the information by the open and closed type of questions and you will listen attentively to the patient whatever he says so don't ignore we should not ignore any small point which the patient says so listen very carefully to the patient's problems and identify the clear sequence of events like what he what he is mentioning point by point every point should be uh, attentively listened by you and try to get the relevant information and because many times the patients they speak about the irrelevant points which are not related to his problem so try to consider and remember the relevant problems and clarify with him if anything is not clear so these points will be covered in the gathering of information part then third is the uh, next is the exploration of the patient's perspective what is the patient's idea about his problem what is the patient's main concern his expectations and what do we expect from the doctor so this is the patient's perspective then you will build and maintain a proper relationship with your patient and how you will do this by showing proper interest to the patient by listening to him carefully by giving proper attention to his problems and encouraging him to speak you should not be in a hurry so always a good doctor gives proper time sufficient time to the patient so that he can he or she can speak up more comfortably and also communicate in a verbal and non verbal way as you like so the aim is to build a proper rapport and proper relationship with your patient then only he will speak up about all his problems then you can also provide the structure to the consultation you can use some sign language you can use some non verbal commands so and also ensure that you don't uh, you have to take care of the timing also it's not that your consultation should be for more than suppose uh, more than half an hour so you should also take account on your time also in how much time you have to finish your consultation and lastly once all the information is complete you will do the closing part of the session you will summarize the main points of the interview the main uh, problems point by point so that if anything is missed by the patient then he can complete it and with thanks you will end your consultation so this is how the uh, steps of the calgary cambridge framework goes so i'm just revising it because i think already it has been covered so being a medical student is important for you because uh, the patient's presence is required in all the stages of your curriculum however dealing with the real patients may seem unsafe or unpractical in the early stages so this is what i was trying to convey to you that because this is a ece the ece stands for early clinical exposure so uh, exposing the students to the real life patients is very much unsafe because you are very much new to this uh, uh, curriculum so uh, uh, our role is to first expose you and train you with the simulated patients so what we are doing to overcome this obstacle the uh, we have developed what we have developed patient simulation so these as you can see in the photographs we can use some mannequins also and they will help you the mannequins will help you in the simulation uh, there are mannequins available different procedures can be performed on them like the cardiopulmonary resuscitation you will learn how to give a injection how to give a iv line how to resuscitate a newborn baby so all different types of mannequins different types of computerized uh, simulation devices are nowadays available and even the uh, patients can be trained or some volunteers they can be trained with the specific symptoms and signs of the disease so uh, in the examination maybe there may be a station in which there is a simulated patient and uh, on asking then these patients will keep on repeating the same thing the same symptoms and signs they will not tell anything new every time so these patients they are uh, a person who is uh, acting as a simulator or a simulated patient he is given a proper training and they keep on repeating the same symptom signs the same scenario every time consistently so they act as the simulators for example just like as a fireman is trained similarly we are going to train you and as a fireman is trained in a real life situation the training can be unsafe for the trainer uh, so and it can also affect the performance of other firemen why because in a real life situation a trainee has no chance to be supervised because if we are directly suppose exposing even a fireman to a 
a, a, a building which has caught fire, then it is risky for his life because he has no training and there is no supervision. There is no time to give the feedback and you can't repeat the act because once it has been done, it can't be reverted back. So in the real life situation, always we need a good training before entering in a real life situation. And this initial training can only be done by simulation. Like suppose you, you go to a driving school, so you don't uh, you, you are not asked to drive a car directly. First, uh, in some uh, centers, there is a simulator machine and you turn the basics of the uh, driving and everything on a machine simulator. So similarly, in the medical practice, we first expose you to the simulated patients before exposing you to the real life patients later on in your curriculum. So who are the simulated patients? So these are the individuals who are trained to perform the role of a patient realistically and consistently. So as I told you, they are just like actors. They are acting and they are behaving. They, they, they are not suffering from the disease, but they are just performing the role of a patient realistically. That is in like a just like a real patient and consistently every time they will show you or and they will answer you the same results. It's not that for different uh, students they will answer something else. So because they are trained in such a way that suppose for example, uh, like suppose uh, this this uh, uh, gentleman is suffering from COVID-19. So every time he will say that he is suffering from fever, nausea, vomiting, headache to every patient. So like that, uh, these patients they just behave as if they are in the shoes of the patients and thus they will speak up the same symptoms and signs. So why do you learn with the simulated patients? Because learning with the simulated patient is risk free. There is no harm because uh, there is like suppose we are studying about tuberculosis and tuberculosis is an infectious disease. So the students will be protected. There is no chance or maybe COVID-19. So if you are uh, uh, consulting a simulated patient of COVID-19, there is no chance that you will get any infection from him because in actual, in the real terms, he is not suffering from the disease. He is just acting as a simulator of COVID-19. So uh, the learning with the simulated patient is very good because it is risk-free, it is fair, there is no bias because the simulators are feed it with a standardized questionnaire, with a standardized performer, and they, they know what they have to speak when asked. So their symptoms and signs are decided uh, previously and they will always speak the same results and same findings. So it is risk free. It is fair. There is no bias. It is consistent. Every time they will show the same symptoms and signs. It allows a good time management because uh, uh, these are the standardized simulators and there is they will not speak up anything which is not related to their disease or problem. So it allows the proper time management. They get it allows you to get a focused feedback and it allows to practice good communication and clinical skills. So the students learn very nicely once they are exposed to the simulated patients. They develop the good clinical skills in a simulated environment. So it is an essential skill which you need to apply for gathering information. So as I told you, that in the Calgary Cambridge part, uh, the most important part is of gathering of information. So, so how you will gather the information? You will gather the information by asking questions, by asking questions to your patients. Now questions will be of two types. First is the closed questions and second is the open questions. So it's not that uh, we will ask either the closed or the open. Both can be used depending on the type of uh, scenario or the type of the patient. So. The closed question means that if the answer is either in yes or no, the patient will not describe in detail. He will just say yes or no. For example, that if you ask to your patient that do you feel stressed these days? So what will be his answer? He will say either yes or no. He will not say anything more about that. So if the question is a direct question and the answer is in yes and no, then it is called as a closed question. So but what are the disadvantages of closed questions? because it will sometimes leave your problems unexplored because by yes and no, I'm not getting any details about the disease or the problem and the anxieties or the problems, they are not solved, they are unresolved. So it is a type of incomplete question because we just get a little knowledge by asking the closed questions. The more better questions which are used in consultation, in counseling are the open questions. They are much better if you ask your patients because 
<coughs> these questions are descriptive and it gives sufficient time to the patient to explain his or her problem. Like suppose you ask, what is the most difficult or worrying or depressing thing? Tell me about it. So he will now uh, tell you everything in detail in a story form that how his problem began, at what age, what are the factors which were responsible for his problem, how he gets relief from his problem. So everything in a story form he will keep on describing. So therefore these questions are called as open questions because there is no end, proper end, uh, yes or no end to this. So the open questions are always better in the consultation, but it's not that the closed questions are not important. They are also important, but usually we start with the open questions with our patients. Definitely, it, these questions will take more time, but on the other end, it will give you more information also. It will create more work. It will be more stressful for the doctor, definitely, because he is spending more time on his patients. But the good thing is that it will help you to understand your patient's problems. So you will be able to identify the problems of your patients and to find the right solution. OK, so I think this was just a, a brief uh, setup for the simulated patients. And uh, tomorrow in detail, you will be studying with the scenario and how do we deal with the simulated patients? You will be doing the role playing. Some students will act as the simulators. Some will act as the interviewers and some will write the feedback. So this is how we will conduct the session inshallah tomorrow. So I think uh, it should be clear to you. If anything is not clear, then please ask. I will explain. I will try to explain you again. Yes, any questions? Uh, doctor. Yeah. Uh, like uh, when I got to hospital uh, yeah. for myself, okay. for my uh, family, family member, mm -hmm. I don't see the doctor do all the steps. Like they, they don't do it actually. Just ask what's, uh, what's wrong with me, then uh, then just give me the medicine. Actually, actually yeah. what I'm uh, we are trying to explain you, this is what should be the ideal practice. Many times because of shortage of time, the doctors are in a hurry. They are not following the exact steps of the Calgary Calgary. But this is important for you, like so that if you become a doctor in the future, uh, then to become a good doctor, to develop a good rapport with your patient, you should try to give more time. You should try to follow the steps of the Calgary Cambridge because many times if suppose if the doctor is in a hurry, there are a lot of patients waiting, then I, I understand that they, they will hardly just give you four or five minutes and they will just try to uh, finish off with your consultation and call the next patient. But this is the actually the ideal setup which you should give. You should try to follow the steps so that you can uh, give more time to your patients and listen to your patients in a better way. So this is the right approach actually. But I but but yes, this is the actually not very much followed. I do understand, but it will be good if you follow the steps exactly. Yes, anything else? Uh, doctor. Yes. Uh, what is uh, required from us tomorrow? Requirements for tomorrow's session will be, I think, sent to you today by today evening for, by your coordinators. And uh, yes, they will send you, inshallah. OK. Doctor, I have a question. Yes. Uh, which question comes first? Closed question or the open question? The open questions, definitely the open questions. Because first we should give time. We should first ask the patient that why he has come, what are his problems? So then it will start, definitely your consultation will start with the open question. And sometimes if the patient is taking too much time, there is a, the, the doctor is busy, then he can say uh, specifically that, okay, tell me about this particular thing, yes or no, he will say. So definitely your consultation should start with an open question. Okay. okay. Any more questions? Okay, so I think uh, I will uh, end my session now and uh, hopefully you will discuss in detail about this learning with the simulated patient tomorrow in the practical session. Okay, thank you very much.